Welcome, my nomads. Welcome to another big cast. It's your boy Nigel here, and with me today, I got Zach. How you doing, Zach? I'm doing, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm chilling, man. Um, so Zach, what I want to talk to you about today is streaming. I'm sure, uh, considering the business that you're in. I'm sure you see all this news about like Netflix, Paramount Plus. I just saw an article today that Paramount Plus has 40 million subscribers. It seems like the stream wars are getting a little out of hand, man. Yeah, no, it is. It's almost (laughs) eating the purpose of why they're here to begin with, you know? Yeah, I mean, Netflix has recently just gone off its rocker. It's... It's freaking out. It lost a bunch of subscribers after the, well, they say after the pandemic. I mean, it's still kind of going on. It's still kind of not. Yeah. But yeah, like, let me ask you this. Would you ever consider, like now, today, consider yeah. getting rid of Netflix? I will once I'm done watching Ozark. <laughs> oh, wow. We just finished episode 11. Mm-hmm um once that's done i don't see anything in the future for them that they have lined up that's going to be entertaining for me because here's the thing right what drew us to netflix let's be real before they had the marvel shows on now marvel's moved to disney plus right the original content that was promised is really it's not that great and putting on my, you know, business side of things and what Wall Street does. Now you you have a situation with why Netflix was as popular as it was is because it was pretty much the first of its kind. And the only of its kind for a long time. Exactly. So they had all the market saturation. They had all the, you know, possible customers they can get. So revenue was high and it was a new thing. So pretty much any company that starts something new, obviously it's going to get a higher evaluation compared to something, you know, later on down the road when other companies catch up, you know what I mean? And now we yeah. have a bunch of other companies who have now understood that more people want to stay home and watch stuff than ever before. And they've gotten smart. Like Paramount plus is, you know, like you said, like I personally don't have it, but 40 million subscribers is a lot, you know? Yeah. I think it's like what Drake said. It's not who about, it's not about who did it first. It's, it's about who did it the best. best. Exactly. 100%. And the thing is, Netflix started off by mailing DVDs to your house. I know people under 18 do not know what that is. <laughs> All right. But yeah. it's just one of those things where it was supposed to replace Blockbuster. That was the whole point of it. That was the whole purpose. And it did. And it did. You're right. There's one in existence. And I think it's in Alaska somewhere. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so other than that, it's, you know, now it's paying the price. Now, take the political stuff out of it, what Elon Musk is saying about all that stuff, right? Like, take that out of it. You just look at it in a t- pure, simplest business point of view. There's not enough original content compared to everything else. It's supply and demand. What do you have that can create demand? And do you have the supply to fulfill it? And right now they don't have it. Well, I think, I think there is enough original content, but I think no one cares. Well, exactly. That's what I meant by it. it, it it's not, it's, there, there's nothing tan. It's not like it's not tangible, but there isn't anything of, of quality to it. Exactly. I feel like Netflix will throw anything at the wall. And they'll throw like 20 things at the wall. And out of those 20 things, maybe two or three things will stick. But because they still do that whole drop everything at once, they contain the conversation of pop culture for or just a little exactly one for like three days, three four and days. Other, and the other companies don't do that. They they release it every week, and that's and that's what keeps coming you back because what you're doing is that you're guaranteeing them to return at a later date. And then while they're watching the show that they're coming back to in a week or so later. You have other content that can draw them once they're done or they have something else and it creates that cycle. It's a guaranteed business that you have. And Netflix, like you said, just drops it all at once. I mean, personally, I'm not a very creative person when it comes to this type of thing. 
but I feel like I could create a Netflix show and they would buy it because they're well, they I, I appreciate the whole Sundance thing. I really do. But at the end of the day, you really can have some random person who has this idea that's been done 20,000 times and that they, uh, they, they launch it and they just see if it sticks or not. You know what I mean? And that's, that, that's a huge problem. I feel like they're getting more, international shows that are getting more publicity and people are paying attention to that more than actually things that are like American made, you know, like that's very that's the true part. And look, I love the international stuff, but you can't rely on that because at the end of the day, people from here cannot really identify with the Korean culture, like squid games, for example. Yeah. Culture shock, man. Yeah, exactly. You're like, two so, different so things. New, but that's something new. It's just going to get old after a while. Like season two of Squid Game, you think it's going to have the same effect as season one? Absolutely not. No, season one was like a, a bottle, lightning in a bottle, man. Right. Like you can't recreate that, especially since they're like rushing it out. The first Squid Game took like 10 years to make. That's the whole point. Exactly. You know, and we can say what we want about uh, Dave Cameron, but he takes his sweet time making a movie. You know, it's going to be good. You know, he yeah. could easily have just fast forward the whole production for Avatar 2. The guy waited another 12 years, to re- uh, 13 years to release another one. And, you know, it's... First of all, anything well. that man touches is gold. Well, I don't care if he takes 20 years. To he make does it on his timeline, and that's how it should be. You know, exactly. but he also has the ability, since he is an acclaimed, you know... Director, yeah. director and creator and he has his own you know money so he has his own companies that he can do this like he can do it on his time not everyone has that ability right so yeah. you know at the end of the day that is the advantage but i feel like if you want quality to come back that has to be done like creative i feel like the whole creative process is just so fast forward not everything is a Taylor Swift song that could be made on the assembly line just out after year after year after year. You know what I mean? Right. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, man, this, you know, like it doesn't work like that. Quality takes a little bit of time. It's not supposed to with uh, films and shows and movies. It's, right. No, you're right. You it, Netflix is just, they throw money at anything. L- let me, let me ask you this. I just saw this article. Um, do you know that, that, uh, hispanic or latino show money heist on netflix it has like a very big following Mm -hmm. there's a korean remake i'm like out of all the things that there's a korean remake that netflix has made and it's coming out soon i'm like out of all the things that netflix is canceling because they lost subscribers you're still going through with that why would you make a korean remake instead of something original right yeah my, it's still money heist is still fairly uh, a new show it, you know this is this is when the this is when you have an unequal amount of content creators and the executive level at netflix versus business people <laughs> there's a there's a disconnect obviously because you have business end where it's like they know how to make money and they're all about the money but at the same time you don't have the right people involved to actually say like, look, this is actually what the public wants at the end of the day. Not everyone wants a 14th Transformers movie, you know? So there has to be, there has to be something new. And, you know, look, let's be real. Our demographic millennials as a whole is the largest demographic in terms of consumption for video content. That's just how it is. Right. You know, you have to cater to that. You know, and the quicker that you start understanding that we have a very diverse demographic and it's not a one size fit all, I think the easier it be is to like, you know, kind of make something that everyone likes, you know, and it, it's just like, look, I see them tanking. Like, look, the thing at the end of the day with the stock price, just take the stock price out of it because that's not a good way of gauging company performance as a whole. They've lost money in terms of how much they're earning. And you can blame the Russia and Ukraine thing and just and taking care of all the and getting rid of all the Russian subscribers. I think it was anywhere from a neighborhood from 700 to 800,000 subscribers. But 700 to 800,000 subscribers is not going to have you lose a market capital share, excuse me, of almost $60 billion. All right. So, you know, because that's not how that, that's not how that works. So, 
now they're paying the price of being lazy with what they should have been doing from the start, which is what Paramount and HBO is doing now. And, uh, it's too late, I think. Personally, like you can't recoup from something like that. Like it's not feasible. Like you think you can have the next hot new thing, but one thing is not going to fix the blunder that they're in. Well, I think one thing that separates Netflix from other subscribers, such as um, Paramount Plus, like you said, and mm -hmm. Disney, is that Disney and Paramount Plus, they have back catalogs of libraries of content. Exactly. You know, right. Paramount Plus owns what? Uh, it's always own Nickelodeon. It's always own a bunch of stuff. Disney yeah. is own ABC. Right. They're the CBS. They're the, they're the CBS uh, network group. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. They got Star Trek, I think. Um, they got the Transformers stuff and everything. Right. So and there's a lot of Star Trek content on there. And, uh, you know, it's funny because um, I wasn't expecting Paramount because uh, it was CBS Plus originally or CBS Now or yeah, whatever it was. It was and then CBS they, And then they rebranded. I wasn't really expecting them to be where they're at. But yeah. once they kind of rebranded the Paramount Plus, like that's the beautiful thing with rebranding. But you made a really good point that people need to understand. They had original content anyway. Disney has 60, 70 years worth of content longer. C CBS is the same yeah. way. You have all of yeah. the shows you can just watch, you know, that people love. Peacock is the same way. NBC has a ne whole Netflix lot of had to start from the bottom up and they're buying all these IPs that aren't really that useful they're not that like you know there's not a whole lot of quality to it you know what i mean so there's nothing to expand on and yeah. you know that, these people never heard about and they're exactly. trying to make something original that no one else has which right. is hard to do right when you're still buying all the the licenses for these other shows which is they're very expensive money very been hemorrhaging money for years exactly. and years and years there like, should have been doing this from jump but right exactly make your and own content 100 you know? and i think we talked about this yesterday about they're doing an amazon business model the thing is with amazon before they started doing their streaming services they didn't post profits for years because what they would do is that they would buy companies that they would like so for example like there was a diaper company right the diaper company historically had lower prices for a long time than any other company. You know what Amazon did to force them to buy, buy them? They lowered their prices of diapers yeah. to a point to where they couldn't compete anymore. And they ended up buying them up after a certain time when after they said no. And they, they historically posted negative profits for so long or negative revenue, that's an oxymoron. Uh, revenue was not going the way that they wanted for so long because they knew that if they got enough market share and everything, it was going to work out eventually. And it did, like it did. And at some point, it works, you know? And then that's how they're able to expand where they're at right now with what they're doing. But well, Amazon can, makes money more than just- Exactly, but I was just using that as an example in terms of just buying things and just like, if you, just because you're posting- quarter after quarter of, of of losses like what what netflix is doing and they're spending all this money to recapture that market share they don't have they don't have the product to reclaim that like amazon is what i'm getting at amazon exactly. had the ability to do it because they're actually providing a uses for people like they're selling stuff you know what i mean they have the cloud services yeah netflix is trying to do the same thing but they only have media content you know, that's the only thing they provide. It's not a necessity. It's just pure entertainment at the end of the day. And entertainment is not valued like that. It's not. There are, they are a production company, but they haven't acted like they're a production company. No. They haven't been spending or saving no. like they should have been like a production company. No, exactly. And Amazon ha makes money more than one way, especially like you said, servers, like the Pentagon runs off of Amazon servers. Netflix runs off of Amazon servers, I heard. So it's like they're making money so many other ways that Amazon is just like, hey, we'll give you a little bonus. Here's some some video content for you. You know, we'll just put it right. out there. Exactly. There you right. go. You know what? I'll just make a Lord of the Rings show just because I feel like. Yeah, know, but, but Netflix doesn't have that type billion. of cash. Like they're not they're not worth three trillion dollars, and they have all that cap. You know, like they don't have. Oh, you froze for a second. Oh. 
He froze for a second, folks. Let's see if we can get him back. Uh, hold on for a second. Oh, it's like, you know. Oh, you're back. Okay. <laughs> you froze for a second. Okay. No problem. It's, it's, you know, there's so much competition now. You can't reclaim all that lost market share. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You can't, you know, and it sucks because, you know, they were the OG for so long, but now it's like, you know, all things must come to an end. And, uh, you know, that this happens to be one of the things. Exactly, man. Like, I find myself barely using Netflix. You know, I, I started $20. using it the other day just because. $20 a month. Yes. And they kept, that's another thing that shot them in the foot. They kept raising their prices. Apple Plus is like maybe five, six bucks a month. Disney Plus is maybe five, six bucks bucks a month Apple's same thing with Hulu. Too. apple's great because i bundle it because i have all apple products so for me i um i bundle it with my music and my apple news and my cloud services total it's 15 dollars with unlimited streaming of music without ads i can get whatever i want i have the news i have um extra cloud storage i have all that for 15 bucks like that's that's less than what I'm paying for Netflix in particular. And it's like, that makes way more sense and you get more out of it, you know? Let me ask you this. Uh, you think Netflix is going to die? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I do. And here's the thing. It's not going to be a sooner rather than later because mm-hmm. this is what I see what's going to happen. They don't have the cash for a forceful takeover because it doesn't make sense to do that because they're not, they're not liquid. I really see like a, they're going to get to a point where they're just going to be worth nothing almost. And then at some point, you're just going to have a company who's like pennies on dollars. Like, here you go. You know, if it's like a Turner, if if it's like a, if it's like a Turner, if it's like a Turner type of thing, you know, like someone who's not involved in the game already will be, and they can use that as kind of like a launching pad because you buy a company like that, that's not worth a whole lot. It's not much different in terms of spending money when you start a platform from the bottom up. You know what I mean? And um, mm. that's So what do you I think see. people are just waiting? At this point, investors are just waiting and waiting until it, the oh, dude, price goes shorted. down, down, down. There are, half of Wall Street's got them shorted anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like the, When you have that much being shorted, you're, you're betting on the fact that they're going to fail. You know, and it's just a matter of when, not if. And when you have that much, the only way you can get around it is kind of like what happened with GameStop and AMC, which is where you had a bunch of retail investors prop them up. But the thing is, Netflix doesn't have that cult following like they do GameStop or AMC, where you can have retail investors spend that kind of cash to keep them propped up. It doesn't make sense. Um, I don't think they have a lot of goodwill with the public anyway with some of their stances and it alienates a lot of people and that kind of creates more division and for what it's worth i think you know like i feel like when you make public stances on the way that that company has without having the following it's kind of it's kind of cascading with what already is a failed business model well when you keep raising your prices and raising your prices right Especially during a pandemic. Oh like... yeah, dude. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it, it's kind of senseless. Like you have to think about it. Like you know, you're catering this product to people, and at the end of the day, the people who are staying home during the pandemic, in particular, like they're deemed not essential. You know, and I'm not yeah. I'm not going to go into that argument of what's essential or not, but according to government, they're deemed not essential. They're the ones that got hurt the most. Yeah. You know, so if you're going to go raise prices on people who are already having a tough time, how is, how can you justify, this is what's happening right now. It just took a little longer, but you know, this is where we're at. You Meanwhile, know? C- other companies were slashing their prices or they right. were giving out their product for free for a limited time. Exactly. Yeah. And Paramount did that. They always had, cause I had them for a minute and I always get emails. Oh, always come back. We'll give you an extra month for free or whatever it is. I'm like, no, nah, it's okay. I'd rather not watch just Star Trek. There's nothing else on there for me. But you know, now you got the Halo show and a bunch of other stuff I was interested in. So I might get back. You got the old OG Nickelodeon shows on there. Oh, uh, really? Stuff, so apparently, yeah, because uh, there's some old shows. I'm like, is this, is this on a streaming service? And I look and it's like Paramount Plus. Oh, maybe or Peacock or, you know. I don't really know anybody who has Paramount or Peacock, but apparently they're killing it. Now, I got a question for you. Um, do you think 
that pe there's going to be a resurgence of cable again. If these streaming services don't wise up, I think so, because um, there's so many apps, like it, almost every channel has their own app, and some of them die, some of them are born and then die before you even know about them because they realize this wasn't a good idea because no one cares about this channel, but... Like Bravo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> the American consumer only has about, I think last time I read was about $100 towards streaming or cable. That's a lot. So, that's a lot. So you're at the end of the day, and I think like that's decreasing anyway because cost of living is going up, gas is going up. So I feel like that when I read that, that was right when HBO Max was about to be born. So I think that is decreased and you you can only spend a certain amount of money and there's all these streaming services. So you're going to have to pick and choose. I have friends now who, who um, they, they pick one streaming service to watch for the month to watch one show. They cancel it. Then they reapply to another one so they can watch a different show. And da -da -da. so I feel like these companies need to do what, Warner and Discovery did. Some of them are going to have to merge their libraries together, merge their stuff because, you know, it's better, you know, they're stronger together than they are separate, you know. I got a question for you then. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to go back to cable, what's going to prevent these companies from actually holding on to their content and not having cable broadcast it? Hmm. Exactly. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? True. But at the end of the day, I, yeah, that's a good point because cable, cable is ridiculously, it's still, it's still cheaper just to have like, I pay I still with, with the gigabit internet cable. and where I'm at, I get pretty much every channel, all the premiums. I pay 250 with cable and internet a month, still which cool. doesn't seem like a lot, but you're thinking about it, like how much internet is alone, right? It's a hundred bucks. So I'm paying like 150 bucks just for the TV, right? So you think about that, you break it down, and that's for every channel. Most of these channels, like you said, have a corresponding app. You get those apps for free as long as you're a cable subscriber to that channel. I can I get HBO Max because I already subscribed to HBO. Like I have all these services. Really, the only thing I'm missing out on is like I just need to have Disney Plus because that also and then have the ESPN bundle with Hulu and everything. That's what thirteen dollars. So if I have that. I have literally everything I can watch. The only thing is Netflix, and I don't really use Netflix like that. So that doesn't really make sense for me to hold on to it when I have all this other stuff that is way more, grabs my attention more. You know, like Disney Plus, like as soon as I'm done with the show, there's like another show that's just like Moon Knight's going to be done soon. Then you have Obi-Wan to concentrate on. And as soon as Obi-Wan's done, then you got the Mandalorian back and Belle Buffett and all this, and you got this circle, right? And that's exactly how it should be. Like their main series, they make sure it's timed perfectly to, to so what, as soon yeah. as you're done with one, the next one's ready, you know, and then you can watch new stuff. And it, it drives yeah. me nuts because it's like, you know, as much as I, as much as I personally despise Disney and a lot of things, they have that right. And they know how to make a lot of money and they're really good with it. And it's, it, and it's like, man, I, I respect the game. I really do. <laughs> And they, they, they more companies like need to emulate that if they want to make money. You know what I mean? Because they cater to their audience as well. Like just because I don't like like them as like a company doesn't mean that they don't listen to their audience. You know exactly. I mean, there's 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 people out there who who hate on Disney for the movies and stuff that they play. Oh, it's just fan service. And I'm like, I'm a thirty year old man. You know, it's like, why wouldn't I want my service that's paying that i'm paying them for not service to me like, like right. oh i don't like that movie because it's fan service so you don't want to get service you want to spend your money and not get service like they right. actually listen to their audience so i i just don't understand that whole oh that's fan service da -da -da. i'm like why well, pay right. them money so and right. then back to your point you said that you spend like around 250 you know there's some people over 
there's some people who don't have that money to spend that 250. So you think like 80 bucks for Verizon Fios a month. Let's say you got 100 bucks, 80 bucks for Verizon Fios. You spend like six, I think it's five or six bucks for Hulu. Hulu pretty much is like the streaming version of cable, you know. Right. So if and you, since it's Disney owned, they have access to a lot of things. Exactly. So you spend six bucks, you know, you got your $86 down. You know, you can you can spend what is the Disney bundle with ESPN plus and Hulu. Hulu. And oh, it, Disney oh plus. yeah, it does have Hulu. So you could just you could just do the Disney Plus bundle for what? 13? 13. Bucks? Yep, that's exactly what I do. So you that's ninety three dollars. You got seven more dollars to spend on like maybe Apple TV Plus or HBO Max. I know they're I know HBO Max is gonna have like a lower tier with ads. So you could be straight, you could have all this content without spending two hundred fifty dollars. You could just have like right. a bucks. I just watch too much live TV. I'm a huge sports person. So for me it just makes sense for me to have the live TV, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because when I get home from work, the last thing I want to do is turn on my Xbox. Then so that's through. where uh, that's where YouTube TV comes in. I didn't know that YouTube TV, they're smart. They have a family option. So if you if one person buys YouTube TV, they will let you share that subscription with five other people. And I'm like, no wonder people keep using YouTube TV instead of all these other live TV services. I've done the research. I'm like, this is the only one that's feasible, man. So I get to watch all my sports. I get to watch the office or youtube tv <laughs> without having to subscribe to peacock i think it is peacock because it's always on comedy central or whatever i have the dvr function i just record every episode you know so I is that watch, what you have yeah youtube tv i can watch uh all the peacock comedies i can watch parks and rec king of queens i can watch uh the office brooklyn 99 you know and that's even without so you don't use Hulu. cable no, I don't use cable. I use t- uh, YouTube TV, and that's a new thing that I have. You know, so it's like I'm I'm straight. I don't I don't need cable. I think cable is just gonna die eventually. You know, and then maybe the next thing that dies is Netflix. Who knows? I I don't know. Like Netflix releases twenty things, and two of them hit, and then they like don't know what to do with their stuff that hits. It's like well, it's flash in a pan because like you said, with the series, they released it all at once. And I mean, the only thing they did it was Ozark. They split it into two separate parts in the end. So you had to watch for the last season. Like th- there's nothing wrong with doing that, mm-hmm. you know? And I think they kind of learned that a little too late. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know, man. It's, it's a little too late, like you said, and they don't have a back catalog of things. They just have licenses to certain things. They do have some international things, like international movies, martial arts movies, which I kind of like. But at the end of the day... Not everyone does. Exactly. You know, I'm like one of those niche people who likes those martial arts films. You know, we're a niche. We're not a big enough demographic to keep a, a streaming service alive. You no, know? And, uh, yeah. I mean, there's only so much I can watch, uh, you know, Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee, you know, so... <laughs> And right now, Netflix is only really killing it with, like, the documentary. I, I'm not a documentary watcher, so I couldn't tell you. But that's what they say. You know, <laughs> right. they say that they're killing it with them. I know I know. whenever I go on Netflix, I see a, another documentary is dropped, another serial killer documentary. I'm like, how many of these do you need? Like, come on. Man. But <laughs> another one is dropped. And then uh, I think that's the only – I think they said they were killing it in some other area, but – the only one I can remember is the documentary, and that's not a good thing. You know, HBO Max, I still think, is killing it. I think it's it's my favorite. It was my favorite streaming service last year. Right. It's my favorite one this year. You know, they're they're just killing it, man. And and they put out quality stuff. They might they might not put out as out as much as uh, Netflix with quantity wise for original content, but their right. original content that they put out is quality quality writing quality directing quality acting everything is just quality down the board and it's just like i'll watch one of their stuff and then i just want to watch it again and then something else comes out on hbo max i'm like i gotta watch it man or hbo in general like hbo in general is you know like when i when i told you to watch scenes from a marriage with oscar isaac i'm like look i know this is typically 
not our thing, right? But I saw it because I really like Oscar Isaac. Like for me, him as an actor, he's just so undervalued in so many things. I'm like, all right, this, so I got to watch this, you know, even if it's not my type of thing. And I'm sitting here within the first 20 minutes. I'm like, man, this guy is one is definitely one of Hollywood's best actors. And no one just talks about him, you know, yeah. and it drives me nuts. I was like, that show right there, like that miniseries, he, I'm like, how does he not get nominated yeah. for that? How? Like, you feel it's, for him. It's a crime. It's you a crime. feel for this dude that oh, yeah, gets felt. cheated on, and then she, Jessica Spoiler Chastain's alert. character in the beginning, <laughs> makes it his fault that she was cheating on this guy who was half her Spoiler age. alert, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Spoiler well, I'm just letting you know. Well, look, the show's been out long enough. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's been out since 2019. And it's, and it's a remake anyway. All right? So this yeah, is yeah, a, yeah. It's a rendition of the one. I've it's been three world. years, people. Yeah, so. <laughs> and then... In the end, I love how it comes full circle with him being in the driver's seat. He gets married to someone else because the whole point is, if people who don't know, they end up having a kid. They're like in their late 30s, early 40s. They end up having a baby. She gets pregnant. She doesn't know what to do with it. He leads, he he allows her to make that decision instead of he he relinquishes that choice of what to do with the child. His Even though wanted. he wanted that child. Exactly. But she left it up to her. If they're going to terminate the pregnancy or not, and she does, and right there, everything just unravels, and it comes full circle. He gets married; they end up divorced. He gets married to some other woman in the end, and she he has a kid with her. And at the end of the series, he takes the house that they originally had as an Airbnb, rents it out, and they're having an affair. I'm like, oh man! Like, I mean, but I you just see how broken. Exactly. They both are. I rooted for him though. Like the entire time, even though him, he yeah. is equally as flawed. Right. I rooted for him, yeah. And I'm like, dude, like ruin this woman's life, please. She deserves it at this point. You know, that's how I felt. And I was like, you know, like you don't get shows very often where you're emotionally responding to that type of thing. That means that the show is just extremely well done. You know what I mean? And Jessica Chastain did a great job too. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is nuts. I, I I got so sucked into it. As soon as I watched it, I watched every episode the entire night. I started at eight o'clock. I didn't go to bed till four thirty. I don't think emotionally good. I could have uh, binged that show. I watched like <laughs> one episode per day. Yeah. Man, I, I had to get it out of the way. I'm the type of dude. I'm a sieve when it comes to emotion. So just get it all out of the way now, and I'll be fine in like uh, a week. Nah. But it was so that's generally how I watch my shows, one episode per day. But I had to sparse that out. That uh, but uh, no, that, but that, but HBO has the content that you want. Yeah. Tokyo Vice on HBO Max is another one, extremely well done. Um, mm -hmm. um uh, uh, what's his name? Ansel El Ansel Elcourt. Elcourt, yes, and Ken Watanabe, great, great, great show. I definitely recommend that. Um. Man, there's like all kinds of stuff on it on HBO Max. You know, hey, I like my Rick and Morty, and I like how it's uncensored on there, so you can watch them just saying whatever. It's great. Yeah. That's great on there. Like they have a lot of good stuff. And, yeah, HBO um, Max is killing it, man. Even the everyone calls them stupid for their whole theater HBO Max release. It works. Thing. Even I call them stupid. I know you did. And it's perfect. It's perfect, yo. They're still thriving. They're they're still making their They money. just didn't do it for Batman, which makes sense because you knew that was a home run, oh, yeah. right? In terms of theatrical releases, you know that was going to be a home run. You knew that people were going to come to the movies to see that. So I understand why they wanted to wait on that. People, and, I, I talk, I know people personally who still went to the theater to see it, even though it was on HBO Max. So you're still going to make your money, you know, but <laughs> it, it's genius, man. HBO Max is my favorite streaming app. You know, um, Disney Plus might be my second only because they put all the Marvel shows on there. Right. I'm watching every single one in order, of uh, timeline order, you know. Right. So I'm watching each one. I skipped Iron Man, I mean, Iron Fist season one for obvious reasons. I will watch season two, but season one I had to skip. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they good. put all the Marvel shows on there. They got all the Star Wars content on there. I'm I'm like a kid in the candy store, man. Uh, right. Awesome. Now, I, so with HBO Max, the only complaint that I had 
was I don't know if you noticed this, but they like advertised CNN Plus on there for a minute until CNN Plus died. I'm like, look, you, you I'm like, why would you get it for an extra dollar if you click on it? I'm like, no, I, I you could have given it to me for free, and it's like you're you don't want to put. The whole point of these streaming services is to get away from real life. You don't want. Well, you know they got paid for that, man. Well, I know. Well, it's owned by the same company, so I get it, right? Yeah. But AT and T. So it's like, but still, at the end of the day, it's like you don't want to put real life into these services. That's the whole point. You want to put content to get people to escape. When you're going to put theatrics of CNN Plus on there, you're ruining the whole point. And I'm glad it died. It died so fast. It fast. (laughs) All right, I don't know who what thought was that faster. was a good idea. That, 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 that I mean, dude, that was nuts. Like, I'm like, well, it only lasted for three weeks, and I'm like, <laughs> and they dropped two hundred million dollars on it. But you know, I feel yeah. like now it's like, okay, so I hope they learn their lesson with that because, and other services do the same. Uh, because unless you're watching live TV, there should be no business of you having news channels opinionated on any of those services, no matter which way you lie. Exactly. Personally. I mean, if you want to just give me the facts as they are, cool. But we we have all learned during the pandemic none of these none of these news sites are oh, none <laughs> of it's partial, right? Exactly. Yeah, you know, like none of them are trustworthy. None you're gonna these... gravitate towards what you agree with, and it's an echo chamber, and you're never learning anything. And that's that that's exactly. the sad part. And the problem is if you want to listen to something that you don't agree with, you're just gonna get infuriated because it's a direct insult to you. So there's like no way to even bridge any middle ground. So, like you said, if there's something that's impartial, I'm all for it, but that doesn't exist here. Exactly. So because time is almost up, I just want to say, Netflix, get your stuff together. This has been another good one. Happy Star Wars Day. (laughs) May the fourth be with you. Uh, Peace, my nomads. Be creative.